十几天没有上厕所，回来以后上厕所啊，回来以后吃了很多黄油，还吃了其他的，就是润滑那个肠胃的，但是还是大出血。十几天从出发前，嗯、呃，到回来以后才上了一次厕所。那边的阵亡率啊，就是人进入战场到基本上你死八到十个小时，就是这么快。基本上每个地下室都有人，都有死人，都有牺牲了，双方都有。卢卡如果治疗了好的话，他腿不用截肢；治疗了不好，腿得截肢。Brothers, we have been fighting for four days and three nights. This urban combat is no joke. It's really not fun. It's very draining. Initially, twelve of us set out. Several were injured, and the rest are all gone. Later, a few more Russians came, but they didn't last either. They lacked experience. The person in the video is named Li Jianwei, a Chinese national serving as a Russian mercenary. During a break in the fighting, he recorded a video on his phone describing the realities of the battlefield. In the video, there is also an African mercenary next to Li Jianwei. The young African man's eyes were filled with fear. They sent a few more Russians, but it didn't make it either. This African is also trembling with fear. There is only one Russian left. What are we waiting for? Just waiting for orders, ready to fight at any moment. Li Jianwei sighed. Saying that the Russians are stubborn and keep pushing, he means that despite the high number of casualties, the fighting continues relentlessly, showing a complete disregard for human life. It is reported that Li Jianwei is a veteran of the Chinese Rocket Force, and he has mentioned having a veteran's privilege card. His accounts of the real situation on the Russian-Ukrainian battlefield have led to his social media accounts being repeatedly banned in mainland China, leaving him bewildered. He states that the brutality of the war exceeds his imagination, and that it will be difficult for Russia to achieve ultimate victory. How terrifying is the reality of a modern battlefield? Li Jianwei describes it in his video as follows: The enemy has a lot of drones. I bet you've never seen drones bombing tanks. There's interference here too. You can hear it from afar. There are more drones in the sky than birds. I tell you. When drones fly over, there are usually one or two in front. If there's interference, it can only affect the front drones. The rear drones then bomb your surroundings, making it impossible to stick your head out. No one dares to show their heads. Their intelligence is very good. As soon as a tank enters the battlefield, they spot it and bomb it, so no one dares to raise their head. Then a few more drones with explosives or tank rocket warheads come and fire at your tank. Hitting it multiple times until it's in pieces. If you're inside the tank, it's impossible to escape. Even the turret can be blown dozens of meters away. As a former soldier, Li Jianwei has experienced the brutality of real warfare. He tells Chinese people that this is not a movie. It's not a game. It's life and death. This battlefield is different from what I imagined. I thought urban combat would be like in the movies: shooting from afar, throwing a grenade, and then kicking down a door. I felt it was a great experience. It seemed fun in the movies, but here, no one holds back. Even the bullets are armor-piercing, just to ensure they kill you. I sincerely hope that Chinese people stop participating in the war in Ukraine. If you decide to join the war, that's your choice. But there's no need to post videos to mislead people back home who are unaware of the real situation. If you come, just come yourself. War is extremely cruel. In an instant, you could be talking one second and gone the next. The basic salary, including monthly allowances, amounts to less than 250,000 rubles a month. I hope for world peace, as war only brings destructive death to humanity. A man from Chongqing named Zhao Rei became the first Chinese national to die as a foreign mercenary on the Russian-Ukrainian battlefield on November 29, 2023. He died only two months after joining the Russian mercenaries. Zhao Rei, 38 years old and unmarried, had retired parents. He died fighting for Russia, but after his death, the Russian military did not acknowledge him as a Russian soldier. Instead, Russian media accused him of stealing someone else's shorts in Russia, being homosexual, having a sexually transmitted disease, and infecting the poly mercenaries. As a result, Zhao Rei's body will not be sent back. Nor will he receive a proper burial in Russia. He will remain a wandering soul in a foreign land, 
and his parents, now elderly and without support, will receive no pension from Russia. Many argue that people become mercenaries for money, but how much do Russian mercenaries earn? The equivalent of $2,700 a month. This amount is relatively low, even in China, let alone for a job that risks one's life. So why are these individuals so eager to risk their life? Zhao Rei was a patriot. In Russia, he praised the country's patriotic education. Reportedly, his decision to join the Russian mercenaries was also driven by patriotism. According to online sources, Zhao Rei's grandfather fought against the Japanese as an underground member of the Communist Party of China. Zhao Rei grew up fascinated by anti-Japanese war dramas produced by the CCP. After the outbreak of the Russian-Ukrainian conflict, Zhao Rei learned through the internet that the Ukrainian army had hired many Western mercenaries to assist in their fight, including soldiers from the Eight Nation Alliance that invaded China back in the 1900s, as well as Japanese soldiers, with whom China has a deep-seated enmity. Motivated by this, he decided to join the Russian army to fight against the Japanese. However, the brutal reality of war is something those who have not experienced it can never truly understand. They believe war is like what they see in movies, imagining themselves as invincible Communist Party members who can navigate through gunfire unscathed, facing opponents as unintelligent as the Japanese soldiers depicted in anti-Japanese war dramas. War is brutal. As Zhao Rei mentioned in his last video, war brings only destructive death to humanity. According to a VOA report on April 17th, the Ukrainian armed forces estimate that Russian casualties in the Ukraine war have reached 451,730, including both dead and injured. U.S. and British intelligence put Russian casualties at over 300,000. Kiev claims over 180,000 Russian soldiers have been killed. Ukraine states it has lost 31,000 soldiers since the war began. Russia rarely discloses casualty numbers, but on December 15, 2023, during Russia's annual press conference, Putin inadvertently revealed that the real number of Russian military casualties is as high as 360,000, surpassing U.S. intelligence estimates by 50,000. According to a BBC report, in the second year of the war, Moscow implemented the so-called meat grinder tactic. The BBC and its partners found that the death toll increased by nearly 25% compared to the first year. The term meat grinder is used to describe the Russian military's strategy of sending waves of soldiers forward, attempting to wear down the Ukrainian forces and expose their positions to Russian artillery fire. In the spring of 2023, during the Battle of Bakhmut, the Wagner Group, a mercenary organization, assisted Russia in capturing the city. Wagner leader Evgeny Prigozhin estimated that his organization lost 22,000 men at that time. In the fall of 2023, the Russian capture of the eastern Ukrainian city of Avdivka also led to a surge in soldier deaths. These reports are corroborated by Xiao Qiang, another Chinese mercenary who was with Zhao Rei. Human lives in the Russian military are considered worthless. In mid-September 2023, Zhao Rei and his friend Xiao Qiang entered Russia as tourists. They spent the day in Moscow before going to a recruitment station the next day. After passing their physical examinations, they were immediately transported to a boot camp. Two weeks later, they were assigned to the Russian 58th Army Group, where the nightmare began. As foreign recruits without special skills, they received the same treatment as regular Russian infantry soldiers serving as cannon fodder in human wave attacks. Western countries' modern weapons supply to Ukraine completely outclass Russian weaponry on the battlefield. Some say the gap between Russian weapons and Western modern weapons is as vast as that between an early mobile phone and the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Russia's only way to counter these powerful weapons is with human cannon fodder. The task of ordinary infantry is to serve as cannon fodder to attract Ukrainian artillery fire. Zhao Rei and Xiao Qiang were assigned to the worst cannon fodder, the Storm Z unit. Known for being a penal unit, Storm Z's primary members are prisoners, mostly convicted murderers, with an average survival time on the battlefield of only two months. Some might suggest surrendering or fleeing as simple solutions. Here is what Li Jianwei has to say about that. 你准备举个白旗啊？你举个白旗过去，这玩意儿。
In this situation, surrendering is not a simple choice. There are drones on both sides. There are people on both sides. If you plan to wave a white flag to surrender, the people on this side might open fire. If you don't wave a white flag, the people on the other side will fire. How do you surrender? You can't even think about it. Surrendering is not a simple process. You have to move from your position to the enemy's position. Whether you carry a weapon is a problem. If you don't, they might think something's wrong. If you do, you risk being misunderstood. Waving a white cloth might get you attacked by drones or artillery before you even reach the enemy position. Snipers could shoot you. Have you seen grenade launchers? They fire rapidly, dozens at a time, like falling landmines. It's very dangerous. Waving a white flag might get you shot directly. Therefore, Zhao Rei and Xiao Qiang dared neither to flee nor surrender. On November 11, 2023, their cannon fodder squad was sent to the fiercely contested front line in Zaporizhia Oblast to serve as human targets for Ukrainian firepower. Upon entering a village, they were immediately surrounded by Ukrainian forces and subjected to relentless bombardment. Within a short time, the 40-man squad was reduced to just six survivors. These survivors hid among the ruins, playing dead until the sixth day when they finally managed to retreat. This narrow escape awakened Zhao Rei to the harsh realities of war, leading him to record the video at the beginning of this article. At that moment, he might have already foreseen his fate. On November 29th, Zhao Rei and his friend Xiao Qiang were once again dispatched to the front line in Novopro Koprivka. Before leaving, Zhao Rei called home expressing his regret and deep longing for his parents. After their departure, Zhao Rei, who stands 1.8 meters tall, was sitting near the turret of an armored personnel carrier when his foot was severely injured by a roadside branch. There were no medics to treat him, and he cannot retreat because the Russian blocking units would indiscriminately kill any retreaters. According to a directive signed by Putin, Russian frontline troops are forbidden to surrender or retreat for any reason. This mission was not just about drawing fire, but capturing a Ukrainian position. The cannon fodder squad launched a human wave assault on the Ukrainian position without tank cover. The Russian armored units even stayed back, forcing the infantry to charge unprotected. Analysts say this is because, in Putin's eyes, armored vehicles are more valuable than human lives. Russia has the greatest wealth disparity in the world. According to Credit Suisse's wealth report, 110 oligarchs hold 35% of the nation's wealth, while 94% of Russian adults have less than $10,000 in assets. This disparity means that in many remote areas, a bag of jerky is enough to recruit a soldier. A T-90 tank costs up to $4.5 million. How many bags of jerky could that buy? Purposely depleting Ukrainian ammunition and $5,000 NATO 155mm shells using their jerky soldiers is a core Russian strategy. Thus, cannon fodder doesn't need expensive armored protection. Without infantry tank coordination, fire support, network communication, medics, or even commanders, a fierce battle resulted in the Ukrainians retreating, and they captured the position. In the video, Xiao Qiang says, The Russians don't treat us like humans. We're no different from a suicide squad. They send us to capture trenches without any support. We suffer heavy casualties, with six or seven out of dozens left unscathed. Many of us were blown up. I survived seven drone bombs by luck. Don't come here. My companion, O Zhao, died with his eyes open and with huge regrets. As a former member of the Chinese People's Liberation Army, Li Jianwei should have more experience than the average person, having undergone various military training and field assessments. Yet, in his video, he remarked that his idea of urban warfare was similar to what he had seen in movies. Li Jianwei's comments raised a question about the actual combat capabilities of the Chinese military. Despite frequently boasting about crushing adversaries and forcefully reunifying Taiwan, have they assessed their true strengths? If a conflict breaks out and they find themselves in a situation like Putin in Russia, unable to control the outcome, what then? Well, their generals might have a plan. Recently, Major General Xu Hui, president of the National Defense University of the Chinese PLA, 
made a startling remark regarding the Russia-Ukraine issue. On June 2nd, Xu Hui, during an exclusive interview with Shenzhen Satellite TV at the Shangri-La Dialogue in Singapore, stated that the experience from the hard-won peace in East Asia over the past 40 years should be used to help other conflict regions in the world cease fire. What experience is he referring to? Why surrendering? I urge Zelensky to consider the lives of the Ukrainian people, understand what he is fighting for. U.S. President Biden said something terrifying. He will support Ukraine until the last Ukrainian. If the fight continues until the last Ukrainian, what are the Ukrainian people fighting for? They will have no people left. He's not fighting until the last American to support Ukraine. He is selling ammunition to Ukraine, supporting the war until the very end. This statement is very frightening. Zelensky should think carefully about what this means for Ukraine, the world, and Europe. Biden's original statement was that, as long as there is a single Ukrainian fighting against Russian aggression, the United States will fully support it. There's nothing wrong with this statement. It's not terrifying at all. However, Major General Xu's translation is frightening. The U.S. wants Ukraine to fight until the last person. Are all Ukrainians supposed to be cannon fodder for the U.S.? Are Ukrainians fighting for the U.S.? Xu Hui's remarks sparkled a frenzy online, including among Chinese netizens. One netizen said, First of all, Major General Xu should learn English better before making such comments. Secondly, the U.S. is not selling weapons, but providing free aid to support Ukrainians in defending their homeland. Try understanding the situation before making baseless accusations. Another netizen remarked, Zelensky and the Ukrainians have been fighting for over two years. Don't they know why they are fighting? If Russians were to invade Beijing, would you be the first to surrender? Many netizens posted comparisons to Wang Jingwei, a Chinese politician who was president of the reorganized national government of the Republic of China, a puppet state of Japan in the 1930s. Many Chinese mocked that if an enemy invaded, Major General Xu would certainly be a traitor. Some netizens sarcastically suggested, Zelensky, just give them the land. We already did. Major General Xu said we should use our experience to maintain world peace. And our experience is to surrender land, give people, and give money. However, Xu Hui's comments were likely aimed at Taiwan's Lai Qingte. Imagining the advice to Zelensky, one can infer, Lie, surrender and submit. Don't think the U.S. will always back you. They're only selling you ammunition. What does it mean for Taiwan if you fight until the last person? How will you govern without any people? If you submit, you could be the governor of Taiwan province. Isn't that good? Consider the lives of all the Taiwanese. Who are you really fighting for? Reunifying Taiwan by force is tough. Getting past the U.S. is also challenging. Biden has said that he would support Taiwan militarily and might even send troops. Trump has said if they attack Taiwan, he would bomb Beijing. No matter who's in power, it will be tough to deal with. Moreover, if the U.S. makes a move, countries like the U.K., Japan, Germany, and France might follow suit. Over the years, China has offended many through various disputes. Not fighting would be embarrassing after making so many bold statements. How can China maintain their role as leaders of the global community of shared future? Trying to persuade Zelensky to surrender serves both as a test and demonstrates China's so-called peaceful approach. Analysts suggest that China, currently facing both domestic and international challenges, needs a war to divert attention from internal conflicts and maintain its unstable rule. So, a war might be inevitable, possibly targeting Taiwan or another region. One netizen replied, When have the Russians ever treated Chinese people as human beings? Another said, It's a pity you became cannon fodder, but who told you to help ruthless invaders? Another comment read, They were misled by anti-American and anti-Ukrainian propaganda by the CCP. China doesn't treat you as human either, or there wouldn't be the frozen division during the Korean War. These were Chinese volunteer troops who froze to death whilst holding their positions. You died, and the party state thinks, pity we lost a good mine worker, and the Russians get your organs. Think about it, did the people who lured you here treat you as humans? Another comment said, want to be treated like a son, but they treat you like rubbish. Run if you can. 
Now, the CCP is constantly threatening to take Taiwan by force and is preparing for war. Their claims of maintaining world peace are blatant lies. The laughable part is that many nationalists cheer them on. Have they ever considered that if they end up on the battlefield, they might become the CCP's cannon fodder too?